I was a competitive bodybuilder uh, many years ago, um, and that was my first love. Uh, I only do about three or four hours a week of bodybuilding training, and the rest is mixed martial arts training right now. Um, and uh, right now, currently, um, I just got uh, done with the A-Team. Everybody remember the A-Team? Am I the only one that's old enough? Mr. T and all that stuff. Yeah, they were doing the movie up in Vancouver, and uh, I worked with the entire cast up there, and that's uh, Liam Neeson and uh, Charlotte Copley from District 9, and uh, if you guys saw Hangover, Bradley Cooper is in the movie. Pretty cool movie. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's a good movie. And of course, Rampage is Mr. T. How cool is that, you know? A lot of black actors were pissed off that he, that my boy made it, and uh, I was really happy. You know, there were a lot of guys that were that were really, uh, you know, really really mad because a lot of guys wanted that role, but uh, but Rampage got it anyway. So no, I can't get the hell out of Canada because I got as soon as I finished in Vancouver, I'm up now. I'm up in uh, Toronto with Bruce Willis, and we're doing a movie called Red. Uh, it's a very very big production. Um, but anyway, enough about that. Let's. Um, that's who I am. That's what I do. Um, like I said, 26 world champions in 11 different sports. Not just bodybuilding, this is a small facet of what I've done. Uh, there's a book called Extreme Muscle Enhancement, uh, which a lot of you guys may have. I signed a few copies here, and uh, you know, it's sort of uh, become a bodybuilding epitome in terms of just a place to turn for, well, what do I eat? And, uh, you know, what should my training look like, and uh, what do we do, what do the pros do, and when they turn to me for advice, what do we, you know, what do we know that works? Um, I talk about dietary supplements, I talk about drugs, I talk about techniques, I, I just talk about everything, it's just basically the truth. Um, when it comes to bodybuilding, I mean, it is my first love, and I'll, I'll always have, I'll always bodybuild trained to some extent. Um, Right but it is into talking. Uh, someone asked me about growth hormone and uh, you know, you know, ups and downs of growth hormone. Uh, you know, the only, you know, it's a, it's a really, it's a staple drug of abuse right now, not just in bodybuilding, but in 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 athletics. Uh, the reason it's it's very widespread in athletics right now. Um, testosterone and other, not so much. You know, the, you know, if you go back 20 years ago, decadirobilin was like the drug of choice among athletes. Not true now. It really is uh, is growth hormone, and the reason is because yes, it is on a banned substance list, but there's no real good test for it. Uh, they're trying, uh, they're struggling, trying to establish a test to detect. Uh, growth hormone, but they've been unsuccessful so far. So you would be amazed. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, based in, you know, Canseco and you know, Mark McGuire and all those guys. But that was the truth. The truth is that it's it's that that's just the tip of the iceberg. It goes much further than that. As far as muscle building and, and bodybuilding is concerned, surprisingly, growth hormone itself is not a great muscle builder. It, it really by itself. It, it doesn't put on a lot of muscle mass. If you just take it, you're, so that's why these anti-aging clinics that pop up all over, how many of you guys heard of anti-aging clinics? You see these places, and, and it's, it's just a way to filter out growth hormone to people. And men and women can take it, and if it were just such a great mass builder, people would be blowing up all over the place. It, it is, in fact, not. It's very good at reducing body fat, especially central obesity, fat around the middle. Um, but here's something interesting that happens. When you combine it with testosterone, or any of the testosterone derivative drugs, the, the sum is way, way bigger than the parts. That's when you start to see the overwhelming, you know, bowl you over uh, expression of, uh, phenotypic expression of massive muscle growth. You really see the difference when you combine the two. Um, and then again, again, much bigger than even testosterone alone, okay? Downsides of growth hormone are that you're basically talking about daily injections. And there's a mental burden there that people don't always take into consideration. Shoving a needle into yourself every day. You know, wears the mind down, you know? Um, you, you, give me an example. Diabetics, you, you just can't get good compliance out of diabetics because they have to stab themselves every day. So after a while, you know, you just kind of it just kind of wears you down. You know, it's become simpler technically. You know, it's a, the needles have become smaller. The dispensing has become easier. There's now growth hormone that doesn't need to be refrigerated. So there are ways that have, that have made it easier. But the fact is, it's still a mental burden and something to be considered. The other thing is, you know, on the black market, it's very expensive. You know, and and right now, I mean, you know. 
people don't have a lot of money. And so, you know, there's a, there's a tremendous expense to growth hormone. Um, and, and that's also something to be considered. If you are going to take growth hormone, uh, you know, you got to remember, there ought to be a medical necessity. How do you know you have a medical necessity for growth hormone and you're not just throwing it in to gain some mass or lose some body fat? Well, there's something called a growth hormone stimulation test, something that we've done at our office and something that I send to endocrinologists, local endocrinologists, to get the test done. And they basically give you a substance and then see how your growth hormone, your normal growth hormone response is. And based on that, over time, they determine whether you're a responder or a non-responder. And, you know, if you're a non-responder, then you qualify for growth hormone under the diagnosis of adult growth hormone deficiency syndrome. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's exceedingly rare. You don't see a ton of it. Um, but those are the people that have a medical necessity for growth hormone. Now, testosterone, leaving that discourse, testosterone is one of the most, you know, men need testosterone. It is amazing how many men are underdiagnosed with what we call hypogonadism. There are different types of hypogonadism, but it is just amazing. You, you, you know, we, we, we just don't have enough physicians that go after this diagnosis and test for it. But as you get older, you know, it's, it's there. It's there in, in, in a, in a, with amazing frequency. Um, so I encourage any man that gets near or over 40 years old to get themselves tested. You know, it's very important to do that because we, we discover it so much. And having a low testosterone is, is as bad as a drug abuser dumping testosterone or having too much testosterone. You know, you, you have a higher incidence of, you know, coronary disease, you have uh, low bone density, you have blood lipid problems. I mean, it's a disaster. So it's very important to know, to know what those numbers are, especially as you get older and as you close in on 40. Um, testosterone in young people, is, it's a, that's a very interesting, it, it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, you know, if you're young enough, if you're like pre or peripubescent, testosterone injections, and when you don't need them, actually cause phallic enlargement. Enlargement of the penis. I'm glad you didn't tell me that when I was like 10, because I would have been like, wow. <laughs> no, probably half of us would have. No, but, and then as you get older, it's really, it gets really bad when you're a young person, teenager, and you start drug abusing. You start hitting the drugs at that point, and you really screw up your own production of testosterone. Um, in particular, a lot of these drugs that are not testosterone, but testosterone derivatives, like you'll see decadurabolin or primabolin or maxibolin or many of these other types of injectables, the variations of the testosterone molecule. And decadurabolin got so popular, uh, you know, like I said, 15 years ago, it was exceedingly popular. And, you know, because it, technically it wasn't really androgenic, it just made you, made you build muscle. But when in truth, it was one of the most damaging drugs you could, you could give your body. You'd, give you, you, you'd put that drug in your body and it would down-regulate your own testosterone. So anybody that said, oh, I, you know, I, I take that cadaverable, it makes me horny as all heck. No, you, it's not possible. That's not possible. It's doing the opposite. I mean, I know what's wrong with your head, but it isn't. Only testosterone does that. So when I give someone hormone replacement therapy, I give them testosterone. So in the, in the area of testosterone, there are not many choices we have in this country that are legal. We have mostly long-acting testosterone and anthate. That's the injectable. Um, it's a pretty good drug, but it is an injectable. So it's an intramuscular injection. It's got to go in every week or two. So there's that, there's that element. It's, uh, it's something to consider. Some people are scared of needles, you know? They don't like it. Um, there's also gels and patches. These are also possibilities. They're much less invasive, um, but it really depends. The, gel, the gels and patches are actually kind of interesting, and now there's pellets too. Those are bioidentical forms of testosterone. So they're identical to your own testosterone. The injectable, which a lot of people like, initially is not bioidentical. It's not exactly the same as the testosterone in your body. So summing that up, Let's, let's come to this idea of uh, what, 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 when we step back and look at what, where we're, our heads have been at for the last 20 or 30 years, it's all about been, you know, building muscle, building muscle, building muscle. What can I do? What can I do to my body? What can I inject in my body? What can I swallow to build more muscle, build more muscle, build more muscle? It's all I've heard about. And in my early days of, of, of uh, competition, that's all I heard about too. 
Um, and then when I went to medical school, that's all I kept hearing about. But you know, it's funny. I 